know what? By the end of this, I'm going to actually travel to Fontaine. By skipping and hopping and going straight up here. And maybe go to the city up here. Because why not? There we go. First things first, I need to... Where is the nearest teleport stone? Okay. Now! Wow. Ooh. And there's also another one here. I want to go to every place in Fontaine before here. Is this where the main city is? Statue of the Seven, Court of Fontaine. Oh, God. Ah, oh, damn it! Did I not just... Fix my camera. Did you just start? The the light just started flooding from the statue of the seven just now. Yes. That's so weird. Did anything like this happen? It's normal for the statue of the seven to glow. You didn't feel uncomfortable at all, huh? Water. Water is speaking to me. I feel like I'm using my gills to breathe. Like Bob was gonna be a crack joke today. Must be fine. But after uh, the air does feel a lot more humid, maybe it's because of the hydro energy that was released. I'm on her that in Fontaine. You can use elemental energy property. You can even swim underwater, making you find sunken treasure. Uh, I'll be lonely going underwater alone. Wow, but being being in the water is scary. You're hydrophobic, aren't you? Not the elemental thing like related to Fontaine, but just water in general. I mean, you won't be able to fly no matter what. And I'll fish you out again. You better not go back on your word. Fontaine's Blessing. A mysterious power that flows up from the statue and imbue you with the blessing of the transoceanic source water. Your progress will all remain unhindered so long as you're moving through the Lake of Fontaine. So, you don't lose stamina? Um, remain hindered so long as you're moving through the Lakes of Fontaine. So, if it's in Fontaine, it counts. Anywhere else, you lose stamina. Another protection of the ocean egg, you expand. What you expand while we is not stamina, but aquatic stamina. As much as when you're aquatic stamina, you will not drown. Okay. Okay. So you can swim underwater. Interesting. Wait for the aqua bus. Where is it? There it is! Hello? Elfane. Oh god. One of these characters. Wait, is that it? When does the. So. Hello. What is this? Welcome aboard the Navialan. The Aqua Bus is bound for the Court of Fontaine, the birthplace of the Steambird. Feel free to subscribe to it. Is that a snail bunny girl? Uh. Immediately. Wow, just like that! <laughs> Welcome to the Navia Line. This journey will be returning to the Court of Fontaine. I am Elfan, your tour guide for this trip. You sound unimpressed. My commentary fails to do justice to the majestic things before your eyes. Majestic. Anyway, the destination of this tour is the Court of Fontaine. The Court of Fontaine. Court of Fontaine. The critic who once compared the city to a cage of stone and steel could not deny its aesthetic appeal. Uh, yeah. To the right of the Aquabus, suspended in midair, is Fontaine's renowned research institute. Uh huh. I hear the employees there do crazy overtime, regardless of rank or distinction. I'm not sure if that had anything to do with the incident. Incident? What incident are you talking about? This should take us straight to the Statue of the Seven. Excellent. We've reached the Temporal Station. Please prepare to disembark. Here? I don't mean to hurry you, but there are just so many attractions in the Court of Fontaine where it is me. I recommend that you begin sightseeing as soon as possible, so you encounter as many of these treasures as Water, well. water everywhere. As for me... And use for transportation. <laughs> Pick me up. What? Welcome to Fontaine. 
All right, where's that statue of the seven? Right here. My God, I actually made it. I made it to Fontaine. The world opens itself with noble hearts. My God, dear God, that took a while. All right, coming. What do you have for me this time? Sonic bursted my way through that front door. Oh, you're here early. Yes, I, just I am. The food should be out in a second. Uh, sit down, sit down. Yes, I did. Let's all take a seat. Yes, let's do it. Here, here after he said, let's take a seat. I'm oh, your oh, cups. Thank you. Nobody has handed in this cup. <laughs> no action is ever seen. FYI, there's a chance to get a free leeway four-star character from this event. If you need to complete some minigames, do it. Decide if you want to do it next time. Wait, well, you're supposed to drink that, Paimon? That was for you to rinse your utensils. Is it one of those... Oh, God. I, I don't know. Like, Paimon screwed up. Uh, is that a thing? Yes, it is. Oops, as you talk, Peppy Hunts, dim some dishes. Damn it, I want it. I already had Chinese today, and now I want some dim sum. I should have fricked and picked up some dim sum while I had a chance. And just when you think all the dishes middle over, the hostess brings over a generous bowl of seafood kungi. Wow, so much delicious food. Do you really eat all of this just for breakfast? Yes. <laughs> That's just how we do it where I'm from. Yeah, I, I eat Chinese food every single day. In a weird pattern like this. Most of the time, though, I don't eat lunch after dim sum. Yeah, because you eat so much, you don't need lunch. Oh, that's good to hear. Paimon doesn't need to worry about holding back then. Eat, eat. If it's not enough, we can always order more. Oh, and there's pong soy coming as well. I don't usually have that in the morning, but, well, since everyone's here, I just had to order it. Why so much food? What about you, Traveler? Is the food to your liking? Uh, That'd be great. Food, Let me Thanks. Pull you. Paimon's gonna take you up on that. And everyone picks their chopsticks and begins to dig in. I feel like this is, like, the fact that he's being ever so generous in his hospitality, it's not, it's not even about the food, it's about him. Eat each with a dish, taste exquisite and uniquely flavorful, you slowly start to relax and enjoy a pleasant conversation over a satisfying meal. This goes on until even Paimon can't eat another bite. <sighs> so full. That meal was so satisfying. Oh, listen, no. listen. Paimon's figured it out. Figured what out? Think about this for a second, Gummy. You invited us to this awesome restaurant and ordered a whole table full of expensive dim sum just for the three of us. Well, you must be hiding the fact that you're some young master from a rich family. That would explain why you try to keep your friends and family away from each other. First of all, not even my ex does this. <laughs> like, like my, my ex knows about things, but not everybody who has... A rich family is going to do something like this. This is way more personal. <laughs> Are you confusing me with Xingqiu? Xingqiu? I can't even pronounce that. Huh? You know Xingqiu? Hmm. Well, when you're on the road as much as I am, you hear all sorts of rumors. Sometimes they're true, sometimes they're not. What it comes down to is being able to tell the difference. More often than not, that means knocking on some doors to find out for yourself. Oh, you truly are a man of many talents, young Master Gami. Okay, okay, enough with the teasing. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble, Paimon, but you're wrong about my family situation. Then you want to correct the situation? What? Oh, Paimon... My dad is just an ordinary tea merchant. Small-scale stuff, you know? It wouldn't even make sense to mention his business in the same breath as the Fei Yun commerce. My dad, he always wanted me to inherit the family business, hmm. to be a merchant like him. Who's, whose dad doesn't want their son to inherit the family business? But that's just not who I am. It's not who I ever wanted to be. I know he's always to be happy and carefree. This is the most serious I've seen him. The topic must be important to him. Have you ever talked to him about it? You know, about your interests and aspirations and stuff. Funny how Paimon is the one who's talking all the time, but my main character's not. Of course I have. I, I told him I wanted to be a wushou dancer. That I wanted all of Tibet to see what I could do. Why do you want to be a dancer? According to my dad, though, that wasn't a real job. Just a child's pipe. Oh, that's terrible. 
I feel like we're dealing with the Mario scenario. Someone who's in, like, the age where they want to do something, but their parents are like, No, that's not a real job. You gotta do a real job scenario. I'm sure he thought I would come around eventually, but wusho dancing has always been the only thing I wanted to do. Then do it. Screw what your dad says and just do it. One day, he tried to get me to visit some other tea merchants to start building the right relationships, but... I refused to go. In the end, I was so angry that I I ran away from home. I haven't been back since. Uh-huh. Uh, don't get in my case just yet, okay? It's not like I think I'm completely without fault. No. I know that it wasn't the right way to go about things. What is the right way then? But my dad's stubborn. No matter how hard I tried to convince him, it just went in one ear and out the other. I knew talking would only get me so far, but if I made it big and leave you a harbor, the results could speak for themselves. So mean. But I'm sure you both already know how that's going. In the past, I would go door to door from store to store, asking if they would be interested in hiring a performer. And you can't just rely on dreams to put food on the table, right? So I found a job as a guard to make some money. And now I have enough to get by and then some. Still, change takes time. Gotta take it slow, you know? Hmm. Simon understands. Okay. Enough of all that serious talk. Yeah. Our tea's getting cold. Ooh. Actually, we! Kind of. We told Tian Yun that we would go to her kite making workshop. Oh? Are you interested in kite making, Gummy? Oh, no. It's just that I happen to know Auntie Tian Yun. And my camp froze, damn it! Now I'm just noticing this. Oh my god. A few moments later. Okay, Auntie Tian That title certainly humanizes her a bit. Wait, is it? If Gami is a nephew of Zhang Wang, then he's a nephew as an oh, adeptus. Oh, I know that she's an adeptus. I met her oh, okay. Friends. But hasn't she been in the city lately? She's even tried, with some limited success, to change her terms of self-address or something like that. Okay, so, like, I know Patrick mentioned something before about the idea of, like, an uncle. And in China, is it, it's... S sort of like a person who you can address to, but doesn't have to be related. I think it's the same thing here when Gami is referring to Cloud Retainer in the same way as an ant, so I guess that the logic sort of connects. She came to see me a few days ago to ask about luminescent dice. Oh, wait a second. She doesn't plan on putting those on a kite, does she? Yes, she does. Is that not something you can do? It's one thing to use it on cloth, but applying it to paper is another matter entirely. Why couldn't she tell me what she wanted them for? Yeah, she does seem to have trouble with that sometimes. Because some people are too proud to admit they want to play around with toys. It would be such a shame if everyone worked so hard on their kites only for them to get ruined in the end. Okay, I'll go with you. If Auntie Xian Yun wants to use those dice in a kite, the formula will need to be changed. Okay. Great. The more the merrier. Okay. A Klausi appeal, a Berlian's revealed. Because reasons. There we go. And I can't froze. Damn it! Gone you. Gone you. Gone you. Come on, wake up. Yo, Some yo. Friends have arrived. And Shenhei. Okay. Yo, yo. Bergening Grace, the youngest disciple of the Streamer Rambler. She's gentle and considerate, treating others with sincerity and generosity, actively taking on the responsibility of others. <gasps> she has bells for hair buns. She is a gifted, enthusiastic learner, and she's always young, sometimes plays harmless playing. She will surely grow to learn in a erudite woman in time. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. <sighs> You're just as tired as I am. Uh, on you. Oh, I have some mint oil. Perhaps we should try that. Oh, God. A guest at Wan Min Restaurant recommended it to me. I've tried it. Its stimulative effects are much stronger than what can be achieved. Reminder that Street Word Rambler is Madame Ping. What? Is this Madame, P Madame Ping, but in a younger version? Hmm. Apologies in advance. Okay. What are you doing? Wait! Shen Ha! Not there! What? You see Shen, I take out a small green bottle, extract some minty, and apply to guy use horns. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably gonna look at shock. Not the game, but can I he stop her in time? <coughs> wait. No, I said yeah, yeah, is her disciple. Ah, oh, wait. Disciple. Ah, oh, oh, damn it. 
I literally See, can't connect the two She's dots. Late. Patrick just put a freaking Windows loading thing over my head every time I get tired. I can barely think. Are you okay, Ganyu? <sighs> Do you need some water? Or, or maybe something to eat? Why? 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 I, I'm fine. I just feel chilly all over. It's the mint. Huh. Was it that effective? Yes. Chilly, huh? Mm. The master always says a cool head leads to a calm heart. So, does this mean that heat's what we need to help you, Ganyu? I don't think your master meant it literally. Uh, Pyra doesn't think that's what the expression means exactly. Exactly. <sighs> I... I feel a bit better now. Yeah, because you freaking had mint oil applied on your head. Was I asleep? Must have been around the time I usually take my midday nap. Did you not sleep last night? That does seem to happen to you often. Uh, Perhaps you should come work at Wanmin Restaurant with me. We get off at 10 on the dot every night without fail. I, okay. I could never. I'm sorry. I seem to have missed your name. You are... <laughs> me? My name is Gaming. I work as a guard for the Secure Transport Agency. <laughs> Gaming. The name sounds familiar. I believe I've heard your name mentioned around the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Are we ever going to do anything? No. People tell me you're an extremely enthusiastic worker, and you are very generous with your help. Okay. Uh, well, you know me. <laughs> or, I guess you don't. My no, you, she doesn't! This is Shenha, and this is Yao Yao. It's an honor to finally meet you all. Oh, you must be here for Auntie Shen Yun's kite-making workshop, right? Yes. Yeah. I have neither made nor flown a kite before. As long as Master is willing to teach, I am willing to learn. I've never done before, but I want to do it! So I have an interest in things that I have never... Damn it, I'm tired. Never, ever learned before because reasons. Me too. I want to participate in the <sighs> competition with my best friend. Okay. Plus, it's more meaningful if you make the kite yourself, right? Yes. Your best friend didn't come with you? Well, Chi Chi's been super busy helping Dr. Baiju lately. I'll meet up with her later and give her a huge surprise. Was it Chi Chi or Madame Pink? Might be Chi Chi. Oh, I also brought bandages and ointment with me today. It's easy to cut yourself when working with bamboo, so uh. I thought I should come prepared. Wow, okay. you're really thoughtful. Hey, As thanks. for myself, I'm afraid I lack some of my companion's enthusiasm. You know what? I'm pretty much with you the whole entire way, on you. Because I ask myself every single day, how the hell do you make a car run without gas? Is it even possible? I was originally planning to buy a ready-made kite and just enjoy the festive city atmosphere with everyone. You're like, I don't know, I'll just do it. But Cloud Retainer yeah. is always going out of her way to look after her juniors, wanting us to have the best there is. She always puts us before herself. Mm -hmm. It was so thoughtful of her to arrange this workshop, so I simply couldn't let such consideration go to waste. I feel like this is an Asian thing. Like, I've seen I've seen my roommate arrange workshops for his friends, so it's like I feel like it is a a sort of Asian culture thing. My motivation for being here might be a little different, yes. But I'm ready to put in just as much effort as everyone else. Okay. Well, we're all here. Well, yeah. she Shouldn't she be here by now? What? 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 Okay. What is it that speaks of oneself in such an ill-tempered tone? Who's talking shit? Oh, come on! You clearly heard Paimon! What? The master stopped to buy grilled tiger fish to share with everyone. Shoot. Come get it while it's still warm. What? Uh oh, Paimon's tiny, Miss Illuminated Bird! Miss Illuminated Bird. the smartest, coolest, and prettiest adeptus. Someone as wonderful as you is sure to have brought enough for Paimon as well. Even Cloud Retainer is not impressed with Paimon. Not impressed. <laughs> uh, Cloud Retainer sits down in her bags while Sri hands out the grilled fish as everyone begins to talk. Like the conversation fills the usually tranquil environment of Mount 
I don't know how to pronounce it. What the hell? I don't know I don't know how to pronounce. Damn it! I saw what you said, Patrick. <laughs> uh, my life is complete. Really? So there's no reason for you to live anymore? Hmm. It appears that we've ended up with quite a few participants indeed. Go ahead and divide yourselves into small groups. Okay. The materials are over here. The regular dyes and luminescent ones have been clearly marked. Use them as you see fit. As okay. for how to make the kite, one assumes you all made sure to listen to the instructions one provided while we were eating. Yes? Are there any questions? What happens if uh, someone has a one-track mind and they weren't listening while they are eating? Does it mean you have to repeat everything again? I somehow call that out for Paimon. I'll be the one making it anyways. I somehow <sighs> so tired. One will wait under this tree and avail oneself of the cool air while one digests. Do not hesitate to seek one's company if you have any trouble, questions, or simply want to chat. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in any hurry to get started. Why don't we start now? What do we do? I don't know. Talk. Yeah. Gumming. What do you have to say? Hey, Gumming. Want to team up? Huh? But did I have to participate? I thought I'd be done for the day after adjusting <laughs> the die formula. What? You're that unenthused by kite making, huh? This is why I want you to change you. the time. This is why I want. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not that. It's just uh, you don't it know. Take too long to exp hmm. What shape should we go? Whichever shape the butterfly symbolizes desire for freedom. Perhaps it's what going searching for. What do you for. think, Shuya? You... Is there a particular design? I want to. Uh, that might be a little hard to pull off. What? True, but I still want to try. <laughs> okay. Decided. Uh, I literally skipped that. I didn't hear. Ganyu um, and Shen Hui. It would be great if you could refrain from putting things on my horns from now on. They're really quite sensitive. Okay. I see. Don't my touch apologies. me. <laughs> I shall remember that in the future. Thank you. No harm done. Right. Good. Could I touch them just once more? <laughs> oil or anything this time? Huh? Please, I told you. Just call me Ganyu. Uh, well, all right. Just be gentle. Wording. Hmm. Firm to the touch, with no discernible temperature. Uh, still, Ganyu appears to be shaking like a cat whose whiskers have just been touched. Why? Uh, oh, I see. Then I'll apply the oil to your forehead next time. Oh, no need. I'll just refrain from taking afternoon naps outdoors. You're like a birdie. You sleep on your feet. <laughs> anyway, we should probably get started on our birdie event. girl, there but actually horned birdie Taylor girl. Comes to check on our progress. Perhaps, perhaps we should just choose the most traditional style. Which is okay. Well, they seem to be getting along swimmingly. Let's not disturb them. But they're not swimming, so <laughs> no. <laughs> You're. <laughs> Cloud retainer, look! Am I doing it right? Is that a bird? Or a weird upside down butterfly? Probably a bird. Hmm, very good. Your frame is nice and sturdy. This design, is it a finch? <laughs> yep. Oh god. One is looking forward to seeing your okay. finished product. What color are you going to make it, Yao Yao? Um, I haven't decided yet. If I make it blue, it'll be more like my friends. But if I make it gold, it'll be more like me. Why do you want it to be? Yeah, I feel like if we're gonna make a choice asking here. Asking for one's own opinion, one would advise choosing gold. Because if you're instead of making it about your friend, make it about yourself. <laughs> when giving a gift, the key consideration is the recipient's feelings, is it not? Yeah, yeah, but then she would have to make it blue. Would much prefer a kite that reminds them of you. Oh, hey, I never told you the kite was for Chi-Chi. How did you know? 
So she is friends with Chi Chi. With age comes wisdom, child. One simply has a way of knowing things. Yeah. In other words, you're old. Oh, cool. <laughs> Okay. One will watch. Because if you're gonna make art, make it about you. Even though the idea of art is somehow egotistical, selfish, and narcissistic, the idea of self-expression also applies here. You two seem strangely unoccupied. One was under the impression that one was supposed to be doing the relaxing. No. We actually haven't started yet, but we're going to start uh, right now. And then we got started. Uh, kites. No. Start making. Do we have to custom make ours? We have to decide on the shape. Hey, what are you laughing at? Oh, God. Am I going to make one in the... The obvious answer is to make a Paimon shape kite. Oh, God. Uh, you build a case frame according to Cloud Genius instruction. Oh god, it is Paimon! Dear god! Oh, what expression should we give her? Since the kite is going. Uh, look pleased with itself, look afraid, should we look guilty about something? Fine, please. Ooh, like this? <laughs> yes. Yes. Which one did you ever oh, make, Patrick? It's done! Paimon has to say, Hi, Paimon, Mikey! Now we just have to attach the string, right? Yes. Alright, gather around, everyone. Because that's what I say, gather around. Oh, Shinyu's calling us! Yes, she is. Hmm, let one take a look. Okay. You can't even say me for a second. Also, that frog is hopping into a wall! Wow! Gongyu and Shenha made a scissor-tailed swallow! It's so pretty. Hey, yeah, the coloring makes it look a lot like Master. If the tail wasn't split in two like that, it might even be a spitting image! Uh, if you look closely, there are... Okay, I show you what it looks like in Discord, the one I chose. Oh god. <laughs> oh god, you made the the one with the I, I see what you're doing. It, it's the one with the I'm pretty sure Patrick will show everybody afterwards. Where Paimon looks dead. Like a ghost or something. Like guilty. God, I can barely see it. But yeah, that that's basically uh the one Patrick uh did I don't know. <laughs> uh. I did the painting. Yes, you did. I stared at the paper for quite some time, but I simply could not recall the coloring of any bird. Or should I say that I'm too familiar with her crane form? Ah, <sighs> uh, tired. So tired. Now that you mention it, Paimon can see it too. Exactly. So I simply closed my eyes and painted from memory. You're able to d d for call and connect the brain. No way. You, you can paint with your eyes closed? Wow. The disciples of Adepti really are something. No, you can't. Not say painting with your eyes closed. Basically, recall from memory. You are most filial, Shenhe. One is flattered by the likeness. Okay. The swanee that Gaomei and Shuyu made looks <clears throat> very majestic. I'm sure it'll look even more impressive as it soars through the sky. The swanee. The eyes and ears glow in the dark, so you're sure to see it at night. Your golden finch is cute too, Yao Yao. <laughs> it's all thanks to Auntie Cloud Retainer's guidance. What about your kite, Traveler? Oh, God. Ta -da! Here it is! Oh, God. Literally. Hmm. It's self important countenance. There's a striking resemblance to that of its namesake. What do you expect? It makes her look like she's already won the competition. 
Feet. Mm. Who huh. dares attempt such a flagrant display of impropriety by releasing a kite into one's territory without hope oh, to do so by making use of this crude piece of mortal machinery? Oh, one simply must know who it is that possesses such impertinence. Mm. Continue attaching the strings, everyone. One will be but a moment. Yeah, she's gonna go kill somebody. Cloud retainer? Traveler, Paimon, could I trouble you to go after Cloud Retainer? Okay. Master's going to be okay, right? Yeah, just really angry. I'm and in a genocidal rage. Hmm. Okay, okay, where do I get gone? Right uh, nah. Fly. Fly! Go fly, fly! A few moments later. Gotta get there done and done. Okay. <sighs> this spontaneous device of mechanical motion is quite curious indeed. Okay, moon cover. Now is hardly an <clears throat> opportune time for your music. Someone among us was not sufficiently attentive. And now the calm yourself. Do you have any recollection of its last location? One believes it drifted in the direction of Mount Alzheimer. Perhaps it is mere happenstance, but one feels a certain sense of dread. Your concern is misplaced. Surely, Cloud Retainer is either in the city looking after her disciples, or secluded in her abode attending to her research on the subject. She will not of notice the kite. Power. Oh, she will notice one the kite. One simply must remark on the genius of its windless lift technology. One cannot help but surmise that its ingenuity rivals that of Cloud Retainer. Still, thy tongue. If Cloud Retainer were to hear you profess such a thing, we can both say farewell to any further use of the Supreme Cuisine Machine. Mm. One presumes that this kite belongs to you. Yes. Huh? There it is. Regard the situation with which we are now confronted. This is all your fault. One's fault? One seems to recall that releasing the kite was no solitary endeavor. Say something, Mountain Shaper. Surely you can think of something to appease her. Are, are they? They're reading each other's minds. And if they can read each other's minds, then couldn't uh, Cloud Retainer also hear them? Further explanation shall only fan the flames of her wrath. It would be better to stay silent and retire at the earliest opportunity. We can okay. hardly avoid her forever. That may suffice during Lantern Night. But what about the Moon Chase Festival? Sooner or later, she will discover our true identity. Mm. Go retrieve the kite. Absolutely not. That is not our kite. Oh, so an adeptus such as oneself is mistaken then? She knows. Ah, you're an adeptus? Please forgive us for any impropriety. I truly possess no inkling of who could have released a kite into your esteemed domain. Pray. She knows. Who could be responsible? She for knows. Verily, verily, we were but delighting in the surrounding scenery. This locale is home to such exquisite. Ah, mint. They're trying to change the subject. And if that's all, then we'll just be on our. We finally caught up. You sure do fly fast in your illuminated bird form, Tianyin. Uh oh. Moon Carter? Mountain Cheaper? What are you doing here? There we go. Hmm. <laughs> she. Okay, now my mom's getting a weird vibe. Did she say something wrong? They try to lie to each other. It is of no consequence. Long has one seen through their disguises. One was simply curious as to how long they would keep up the act. Then you are not angry? <laughs> How could one feel anger at the sight of two old friends enjoying themselves? One is also well aware of how enticing these city novelties can be. <sighs> we were simply consumed by a fit of festive spirit. Seldom do we get the opportunity to partake in the delights of the times. Because you can't help but use big important words to describe simple things. However, 
We are far from being as adept as you in matters that require a deftness of hand. As no worthy kite could be born of our own making. Thus, we could only take the convenient route, so to speak. Your prowess in mechanics is unparalleled, Cloud Retainer. You wield the wind and waves themselves. Your singular talent stands unmatched across the land. You're great. Mm. One has guests to attend to. We will have to convene again some other time. Traveler, Paimon, do try to keep up. Okay. Yeah. Unless you're in a bird form, that's a whole other thing. Okay. We have to get back up there. Return to that. I got to go back up there, don't I? Alright, I gotta get back up there. They're back. Yes, they are. Obvious statement is obvious. <gasps> My mind's pooped. Uh, hi. Why are there only two of you left? Uh, because everybody else had to go. After you left, Yao Yao and Shu Yu tired themselves out playing with their kites. Ga Ming offered to escort them home. Before he left, he said something that I don't quite understand. Okay. Oh? What did he say? He said, A kite is always tied down no matter how far it flies or how high it soars. Its tether prevents it from ever truly flying free. Hmm. Is it, are we really talking about the kite or are we really talking about him? Is he using the kite as a metaphor to describe himself as like projection? He looked quite dejected as he said this. He felt like he was still being tied down. In his own way. Now that you mention it, Bami did seem to have a rather strange attitude towards kites. Perhaps he sees himself reflected in them. A reflection of himself. <gasps> if I were a kite, I would cherish that tether as a symbol. Shenha? <gasps> It may be an exceedingly slim and distant connection, but lose it, and you lose that which links you to home. Mm. If Gaming truly sees a kite as a reflection of himself, then I fear I understand his words even less. Well, because you're trying to connect with other people as a means of re-entering society. He wants to disconnect himself from the people that are tying him to the society. So it's sort of like a... It, it's a different individual thing. Well, people often have different points of view depending on their mindset and experiences, right? It's actually quite normal. Just like some people can eat spicy food, so but tired. others won't go anywhere near it. Exactly. That's why tolerance and understanding are as important as they are. Yeah, because, I don't know. Intolerance and understanding. <laughs> what brought about this conversation? Did one miss something? Yes. We were just chatting. You don't have to butt in on every little thing, you know. Hmm. One was merely doing a bit of cooking. Night fast approaches. If you are otherwise unoccupied, one would entreat you to stay and eat before you depart. Okay. Oh, it's been so long since I've had the chance to enjoy your cooking, Cloud Retainer. Uh, worry not. Why is she One is uh... a variety of meat and vegetable dishes. One is more than familiar with everyone's culinary proclivities. Okay. Shenhe, Ganyu, come with me. Whoa, what's with all the secrecy? You're not trying to play That's why I said you change that. If you're ready to serve the food, we can help you. Oh, you wait outside Cloud Retainer's abode for a few moments. <laughs> What? This is what? Wait. Was that there before? I can't oh, remember. I can feel the wind brushing against my legs. This is a bit embarrassing. Yes, it is. Is the headpiece secure? I should have asked Cloud Retainer to check before I stepped up. Are they trying to dress beautifully? Yes, they are. Okay, so they're in different look? outfits. She asked them just like that. You look good! You're in a dinner outfit! You look pretty cute, don't you? Well, given that one employed the services of the best tailor in all of Liyue. Okay. What colors have you been partial to lately, Shenhe and Ganyu? What? Lately? Why is Cloud... Uh, outfits have always been thinking thing in this game. I like black. 
Black. You always wear black. Why do you want to wear more black? One is gratified to see one's disciple has inherited one's own taste. Why? The color black doesn't get dirty easily. A virtue I've come to value recently. And you, Ganyu? I favor blue and black. And the material is sufficiently comfortable. Yes? Yes, very. I simply cannot thank you enough, Cloud Retainer. Okay. For thank you, Master. One is content, as long as you are pleased with the gift. Okay. You sit down and enjoy a bit of typical delicious food and pleasant company. Seems like your supreme cuisine machine is just getting better and better, Xianyan! Why? This golden crab's particularly good. The shell's deliciously crunchy, and the meat inside is so succulent Shut up. that it's been he traveled all this way on account of the kite making workshop, and he spent the whole afternoon looking after Shuyu. Oh, I was hoping to treat him to a meal. Oh, oh. Uh. One will just have to extend one's thanks in person. <sighs> it's rare for someone to make such a good impression on you, Cloud Retainer. Oh, one has high standards. He appears to be a young man of much merit. And one is not the type who would see such potential squandered. White. Wait, what? It appears that he wishes to break free from the kite string that tethers him. Yes, and you don't know why, except I do, and I'll have to explain that part. Kite string? Huh, what strange metaphors you speak in, Shen He. Okay, you're Ever almost done, don't worry. returned from one mean restaurant, your turns of phrase render one at quite the loss. Uh, he's like, oh, that's a metaphor. Tell me. Where do we even begin? Oh, do you know about the conflict between Ga Ming and his dad, Xin Yin? One has only heard that the two are not on good terms. So you are aware. He ran away from home and hasn't been back since. Mm. Oh? Ran away, you say? Huh. One believes we would all benefit from a more thorough retelling. Start from the beginning. You want to hear more? Oh, okay. Tell her everything she knows about gaming. gaming. What? Yeah, the, uh, what? This shall not do. Why? Lantern Rite fast approaches. We must make haste. As one was contacting various tailors around Liyue, one could not help but be reminded of Minogius. What? He Who's Minogius? He a singular talent for clothing design. He had an exquisite eye, not just for fabric selection and color pairing, but also for what accessories could best accentuate a garment's overall styling. Okay. Even though I could barely put two brain cells together, you're talking about Gumming's family situation. Why are we still talking about the tailor? At a gathering of Adepti, Bonanus once complained in secret to some of the ladies in attendance that the skirt Monobius made for her was too long and impractical, lamenting that it would only hinder her in battle. However, when one asked Minogius his opinion, he remarked that the train of the skirt would serve to enhance her adepto countenance by simplifying a certain elegance. <sighs> Minogius was that type of person. When it came to topics relating to garments and accessories, not even Rex Lapis could rest his stubbornness. Oh, what? And later... What are we talking uh, about? Uh, one seems to have strayed off topic. Yes, you have. Back to going. One means to say. That lantern right should be a day of reunion. Okay. It is a time to address problems before they turn into regrets. So you're saying that Gaming should solve his problem with his dad uh, in mm, effort to be more honorable to the, the lantern right thing. Yes. Fate is fickle. The cruel reality of this world is that suffering and misfortune can befall any of us without design or reason. If there is a chance for young people to remain insulated from this reality, one should do remain one's insulated. utmost to make it so. What? That's nice and all, but... He kind of did it on his own. So, what good is it if we somehow convinced him not to do it? Do you have any ideas, Cloud Retainer? Hmm. Perhaps adeptal arts could be of use. No, no. Mechanics, perhaps. You can't I'm solve it. To see its use in a situation such as this. Yeah, that's the thing. 
you're a decent inventor, you know how to make mechanical stuff, but you don't have social skills. Is there anything I can do to help? Uh, the fact that you say that in the most deadpan expression. Hmm, combining our efforts. Aha, one has an idea. What's your idea? How about this? Does that make sense to everyone? WHAT THE HELL DID YOU JUST SAY?! Yep. Oh, Paimon really hopes this works. You literally said nothing in less than a second. I'm so tired. <laughs> One's designs never fail. Uh, how, how the hell could you... What? Now then, I counsel rest for all. And to make the necessary preparations. One shall see you in two days. Again?! Oh, damn it. There are two things. Cloud City Field burns a real quest complete. Things! In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for. So tired. Yeah. Taking the time to. Uh, sit through this.